My name is Adrian Schwendt from the Swiss company Sasuko. I would like to give a very quick introduction about how I approach querying RDF data cubes. RDF data cubes are really nice when you have two to multi-dimensional data, so typically anything that fits in Excel or more. And it's used quite extensively for publishing, for example, statistical data, environmental data, and so on as linked data in RDF. Um, what we do not show in here, I don't talk about how Sparkle works, I don't talk about RDF as a whole. If you have no idea about that, please go to linked-dana-training.sasuko.com and you will find these two links here, among others, Link Data Basics and Sparkle. It will give you an idea about how you can query Sparkle in general. So we close that here, we don't need that, and we go directly to the RDF data cube vocabulary. This is defined at the W3C. Uh, when you scroll down a bit, you will find this document here. This is basically the representation of the vocabulary within, in a picture. And it looks a little bit complicated when you have a look at it the first time. The only thing we will care about right now are two things, the so-called cube observation and the cube data set. As a reminder, in Sparkle it's extremely important that you write everything exactly how it's defined, so please do note the upper and lower case, the camel case, whatever the vocabulary is using, so we will use that. For starting, we will simply try to see what we have in there. So maybe quickly explain what we have. The data set is basically the grouping for a bunch of measurements. So when you have a measurement in an Excel file, when you have an entry in a row, basically this is grouped or all the entries are grouped within a data set. And the entry itself is represented as a so-called observation. So we observe something in this data set. And there is a link between the two things called cube dataset, note the lowercase d here. So this is the attribute which groups observations in a dataset, so we will use that. Let's go to our Sparkle endpoint. This is this URI here. Um, we'll add that to the links. Have a look at this query here. Please also note that we should try to restrict the Sparkle query to a particular graph in particular the graph from the statistical data set of Zurich. If you don't do that, the query might be slower because it has to go through a lot of different data sets as well. So when I execute this query here, this is the most generic Sparkle query you can have. Give me all subjects, predicates and objects. When I click on the play button here, I get something back. And then in this data set, and I recommend you to check that out wherever you go, try to open the links and if you're lucky you should get an HTML representation of how this thing looks like. This is really really useful for discovering data. Tim Berners-Lee calls this follow your nose because it's linked data. Follow your nose means that you can click on things and you follow other links this resource points to. So in this example here, this is the metadata entry under well-known void. Uh, it says that it's a dataset description from SSSAT, which is Statistical Office in Zurich, in City of Zurich to be uh, particularly correct here. And we have a topic, so we click on this topic as well, we follow the nose there, and then we will see some more metadata, metadata about this dataset. It tells me that it contains statistical data of the city of Zurich in RDF data cube vocabulary. And it tells me when it was last built. This was uh, August 20th, 2018. But that's just the detail for browsing. We close this window, we go back here. And now the question is, what we do, do we do? We basically have two ways to approach it. I talked about the observation and the data set and I propose we quickly have a look at all observations we can find. So if there is statistical data in there we should have at least one observation otherwise it's pretty pointless. So we restrict this query to everything which is a cube observation and as a reminder if you forgot A is a shortcut to RDF type so basically to this URI here 
So with that, you can restrict to subjects that are of a certain class, in this case, of the class cube observation. So again, we play, uh, hit the play button and then we get a bunch of things. I restrict it to 10 triples, so I only get 10 back. I open this one and now I see one example of an observation in this statistical data set. And this one here is a little bit complicated, so we don't want to have, we don't want to spend too much time on this one. I just want to show you something. So this observation points to a data set. So you remember this link here in the RDF data cube vocabulary, um, the data set here and the relationship between the observation and the data set is cube data set. So we see that here. I do have a link, you see the full URI cube data set to a particular data set. So now the next step is we want to see what kind of different data sets do we have in this uh, particular graph. And for that I open the second query window here. I already prepared it. So here the graph query is give me all subjects that are a cube data set. When I hit play I get a link, uh, a bunch of links back and let's quickly do what we always do, open it. Then you see this data set, you see a license, you see a label and some other stuff. The label is really nice so let's quickly go back to my Sparkle query and add. let's add the label for everyone. So we will get all the labels back and now we see all the labels for the data set so in this case this is German so maybe you don't get it but the last one here is population statistics based on spatial and uh, time dimension so we we can query it based on space or time so this sounds simple enough now the question is how can we restrict the observations we had to this particular data set we go back to the query windows where we had the observations and again back to the vocabulary we had this relationship cube data set which points to a particular data set so what do we do we write um, this option observation should have the predicate cube data set and now we need to point to a particular data set and in rdf this is done by pointing to another uri in particular this one here or if you are confused where I got that from, that's the query where I, where I queried all data sets. So you can also simply go in here, right click on this URI and say copy this URI. You go back on the observation tab and right now the query is not yet valid. We need to add these things and paste the link and we should make this one like this, then it's a valid sparkle pattern and now you see give me all subjects which are an observation and which belong to this particular data set now I do that and now you see the result set changed um, the URIs are different again quickly close this window here and this window here because now we want to have a look at one particular observation here so again we have uh, some class assignments, we have appointed to a particular data set, then we have some notation and stuff we don't care about. All these things here don't care about right now, basically from Quelle to notation, we ignore that for the moment. What we care about are the last three things here. If you wonder why I know that I don't care about this, it's because I clicked on these links already. So. When I want to know what is this particular predicate here, I click on it and it gives me a machine description of what this is. And in particular, this thing here is the Bevölkerung, which is the population, and it has a type measure property. Okay, that's something I didn't hear. Let's go back and click on Raum, which is space. And it says um, it's of type dimension property. So now we switch back to the vocabulary and we see that we have these things which I just mentioned here. We have dimension property, attribute property and measure property. 
And without going into too much details, these are the things which basically define what kind of results we get back in a query. The dimension is typically something you can restrict like spatial dimension, time or sex, for example, male or female, things like that. So that would be represented as a dimension in a data cube. The attribute is a special case that's basically kind of metadata which you like to attach to an observation, but it's not that important or you will use it less. So everything like when was the last update which you saw before in this data set is actually an attribute property, but we will totally ignore that for the moment. And the last one, and basically probably for us the most important one, is the measure property. What did you actually measure? And when we go back to this thing here, and we click back to the observation example we had, I said this was the measure property, and it actually says this is the population. And it gives some more comment about what exactly is the semantics of this measurement here in the context of the statistical data set of the city of Zurich. Unfortunately for you, this is in German, so unless you know German, you won't be able to do much with that, but it's enough that we can query it. So one step back, this was one sample query, and now the question is how can we query, for example, all observations which are for one particular part of the city of Zurich? So we only have these two restrictions right now, so I think we will have to add some more restrictions and we will have to read out the measurement. So maybe the first thing we could do is read out what we actually measure. Get, let's get this double value here. So for that we again copy the link. We go back to the Sparkle query and we say there is a new predicate, so I need to do this. And this predicate is this uh, measurement thingy here and I don't know what it is because that's what I actually want to for example plot in a graph in the end so let's assign that as measurement let's see what we get back so very nice now we don't only get the URI we also get a measurement back but let's just uh, click a bit around so I open this one and I see the space, the round dimension here is Rathaus. I think that's a neighborhood in Zurich. I go back, I close this window, I take another example, um, for example this one. And I see what the Raum is, this is 10,000. This is Kreis 1, this is another grouping in Zurich, and in particular it's an old one, It's that was before 1893. This seems to go quite a bit back, this data set, so... Now the question is, how do I figure out, for example, just the population statistics for the center or for the city of Zurich itself, like whatever they define as city of Zurich. And now I cheat a bit because I know that this code for this particular uh, spatial dimension is uh, 30,000. When I enter that, it tells me 30,000 is the code for the city of Zurich starting from 1934. So now we just add one more restriction to this data set and we want to know what observations do we have for the city of Zurich. So uniquely this. We go, we copy that, no, actually we go back first. Um, we go also back on this one to this sample query. So now we want to restrict the spatial dimension. So we need to copy this link here, the predicate or the dimension space, Raum in German. And again, we add that here as another restriction on this thing. And now I could simply say space, I would get anything back, but we said that's not the point, we want to have the restriction 30,000, so I can for example copy the link for the space 10,000, I add that here, and instead of 10,000, which would be a valid restriction as well, we simply add 30,000 and we click play. So now we only get measurements back for the spatial dimension 30,000, which is the whole city of Zurich, starting from 
the definition from 1934. And now what is actually missing to plot that uh, in a nice diagram? The only thing we need is we need to have the time as well. We go back to a sample observation and we see, okay, this seems to be the dimension for time. So I copy this dimension URI here. And by the way, when I click on it, it also tells me it's a dimension property site in German. I go back again, I extend my Sparkle query with yet another restriction. And because I want to plot it in time, I don't really want to restrict it. It should give me all the times back it has. Uh, and I call it date, for example. And then we do it again. So now you see that at 31st December of 2017, in this uh, spatial restriction here, we had 423,310 uh, measurements, which is in this case uh, population, so people. We had 423,000 and something people living in this particular spatial dimension. That's pretty much it. That's how I approach RDF data cubes. When you take this approach, you can basically go in whatever data set you find and it will be quite easy to understand how this thing looks like. For sure, you could all query that information in here. So actually you could create generic components which can automatically figure out what dimensions do we have, what measurements do we have. But I think for a start, you are better off just with these two things and the rest will come when you have a good reason to do so. Uh, last but not least, when you want to plot that, you need to take away the limit. And right now we only had 10 result sets. Let's see how many measurements we have for city of Zurich in total. And we have 84 entries. When we have a look at the date, it seems to be at the end of the year all the time. So maybe we start with sorting it and you see the first one is 31st of December 1934, which makes sense because we saw that this was the spatial dimension, city of Zurich starting from that point. And the last one is 31st of December 2017, so basically we had apparently 84 years of measurements for the city of Zurich. That's it, more advanced stuff in another video. Thanks a lot and have fun.